There's a new pirate adventure on the horizon, Skull and Bones, and its port of origin is Ubisoft Singapore. Just to be able to tell people, hey, I'm working on a pirate game, and it's the pirate game we've always dreamed about, we've always dreamed of playing this game. That resonates with a lot of us that, that really have dreamed about making the ultimate pirate game. Uh, nobody ever played pirate by themselves. While working on the Black Flag, at the end of it, we tried to put two players together, and it was just amazing. Like that very simple experience, just two ships with those great cannons, all that firepower that you give to the player, and you blow everything. It was just super cool. We already knew that something great could come out of that. We're not making Black Flag 2.0, we're making our own game, but we really went to school on what we've done in the past. In this video, you'll learn what it takes to become a pirate kingpin, how you'll craft your fleet to aid your allies and loot your enemies, why the Indian Ocean is the true home of piracy, and how the team's experience and expertise from working on Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag inspired them to embark on this ambitious new journey. Our pirates are at the helm of the ship, so we control a giant tall ship across different classes of ships, from a small sloop to a giant frigate. The pirates themselves uh, start out with one ship, and over time they're going to collect more and more ships. And that gives them lots of, play, like I said, playstyle options and ways to take on their enemies. The other thing that it gives them a chance to do is to start to develop strengths in combat and PvP with and against other players. One of our uh, uh, very interesting class that we have today is a sharpshooter. Basically, it's a long gun that is on a very small ship, ship that doesn't have a lot of defense, but can shoot very, very far, extremely strong. And we also have the frigate, which is able to uh, basically sponge up damage. And it's very deadly when it gets its broadsides, uh, you know, zeroed in on its target. So our vision for our classes and our ship types is very similar to traditional RPG archetypes. So we want players to have a familiar system that they understand from playing other games and other genres. We want to give the players opportunities to have lots of these different ships so I can, depending on my situation, switch between my ships to uh, support my teammates or support my friends or to uh, betray my friend or, or uh, betray my former ally. The combat that we wanted to bring was uh, multi-dimensional and one of the strong dimensions is the positioning, which side of his helm is stronger than the other, but also what will, what will be the direction and the position that will give him an advantage in terms of wind positioning. The pivotal breakthrough for the experience of navigation and combat in Skull and Bones is using the wind and the ocean itself. And for us, wind is that tactical layer that lays on top of our systemic ocean. So wind is, is not just a navigation tool, it's how you assess the situation. It's used for positioning, to be in the right position to strike. It can be used both offensively and defensively. It's a way for you to escape quicker and gain an advantage on your prey. So we can read it, read it in every single element of the world, read it in the stream that you can see in the world, read it in the cells, the way they are turning, the way they are inflating. The ability to position your, your ship so that you can bring your weapons to bear and all kinds of different weapons from uh, mortars to rockets to cannons. There are a lot of key things that you have to juggle. You have the ability to go up to the crow's nest. You have a much wider FOV, almost a 360 degree if you, if you go around view of the environment. That helps you make decisions using the wind, the environment, and the position of your target. Position fixed! Open fire! So when you're constantly learning the abilities of your ship, compounded by the weaknesses of your target, you're even able to become a more deadly predator. We want players to feel powerful, um, but not all of the factions are uh, toothless. So when the, the player encounters these factions, he'll have to make those decisions. Is it a target I can take on by, by myself? Is it something where I've got to take down um, you know, using my friends. I've got to call some of my buddies and my gang and bring them online with me or, or I'm not going to have a chance. The world reacts and that's where our pirate hunters come in. They represent the VOC and they have a vested interest in securing the safety of their merchant ships. So the more thefts, the more heists that take place, 
the more likely it is in the world and in Loot Hunt that the pirate hunter is going to respond and try to hold you accountable for robbing from them. I, I will say that the pirate hunters are something you can't tackle by yourself and there's going to be lots of encounters like that in Skull and Bones where you have to work together with your friends. Uh, but we'll wait and see. I mean, the idea is to put these things in a world that is logical and cohesive. And I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm just saying uh, don't try to do it by yourself. I'm sure someone's going to try to do it. <laughs> oh, of course. And somebody will be successful, but that guy will be legendary. The Indian Ocean was super compelling for us. It's, it's a different setting. It has all of the major ecosystems and so many different trade resources within the world that we could build a fantasy uh, very strong fantasy about how pirates operated and how pirates worked inside the Indian Ocean. So you have an ocean that has uh, amazing trade winds, uh, beautiful waters that, that change in color and texture and behavior from region to region. It gives us a really huge canvas for us to tell our story. We have a team who understand and live in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And because you understand it, you can smell it almost. When we have the image on the screen, we know what it looks like in real life. We know how it feels like. We understand the world as it is in the Indian Ocean. And I think that makes a lot of difference. Our game is dominated by a lot of uh, uh, islands and shorelines and so on. So it's a bit close to, to what we have here in Singapore in terms of the uh, environment. It's very tropical. There's a lot of beaches. It's a subject matter that's a bit familiar to, uh, to us here. So we pay attention to the big picture, from the big composition to, to lighting and all the way to the smaller details like little swaying ropes and the subtle spray from the ocean. We want the, the adventure to go on with you as the star, you, you're at the, at your pirate is the center of this game. And then if every player is the center of the game, we make these communities and we make their own stories um, and across different seasons, across different time periods, uh, the, game will, the game will live on and we'll keep introducing new and unique content, different ships, different weapons, different items, different locations, different game modes. And I think that's what makes Skull and Bones so special, this idea that you can create your own game, you can have your own identity, your own flags, your own emblems, your own colors, and you can go to war with each other and build your gang up to take over the whole Indian Ocean.